Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. If you're new here, my name is Sam. I'm a professional hairstylist and in today's video I am going to share with you how I freehand balayaged my hair to add this little bit of subtle warm dimension. I've had my hair a pretty solid dark brown for almost a year now and I was just getting bored with it. I just wanted to add a little something different but I didn't want to like completely change my look altogether. I also am in the process of growing my hair out so I'm trying to keep it as healthy as possible so I wanted to do something that was going to be nice and gentle. So if you're looking to add something a little subtle to your hair but you're also a little bit scared of causing any damage to it, this is the tutorial for for you. Now if you are looking for something more dramatic, you want more lift, you want to be a lot brighter and lighter, then this is not going to be the best technique. I have tons of other videos where I'm coloring my hair, lightening it, doing foils, all of that kind of stuff. I will link my hair tutorial playlist in the description. Just a little disclaimer, I am a professional. The products that I use are all professional only products. However, I will try to find similar items that you can purchase at Sally's if you are not a licensed professional and I will have links to all of that in the description. Do this at your own risk. Even though this technique is more gentle, anytime you're going to be applying any chemicals to your hair, there's always the possibility of damage. So Keep that in mind, and if you have a lot of layers of artificial color in your hair, especially if it's box dye, you may not get the results that you're looking for. Everyone's hair is different, and your starting point in your hair history is very important and plays a big role in the final result that you're going to get. So yeah, if you want to see how I went from this to this, then just keep watching. Um, so I'm starting off on clean hair. I washed it last night with a clarifying shampoo to just make sure, you know, I removed any kind of buildup. It's better to do this on clean hair. If your hair is dirty, there's a lot of product and oil buildup, that's just gonna be an extra barrier that the product has to work through in order to lighten your hair. So the cleaner it is, the better. However you normally style your hair, if you always flat iron it and wear it straight, then you wanna do this on straightened hair. If you leave your hair curly and natural, do this on your natural curly hair. This application is very organic, so you really want to see where your hair naturally lives, um, how it falls, the way that you would normally realistically wear it. So that way you know exactly where you're placing the color and how it's going to look. So I just brushed through to make sure there's no tangles or anything, and I parted down the middle. Part your hair wherever you normally wear it, if you change it up and you flip it around, then I would suggest parting it down the middle. So as far as what you're going to need for this process, you're going to need a few hair clips, of course. You're also going to need a color bowl. You're going to need some kind of a brush. I'm actually using a natural chip brush that you can literally just get at like any hardware store. I love using this because the bristles kind of go all over the place. Um, which really helps for blending and diffusing the product. I just love the application that I get with this kind of brush as opposed to, you know, just like a synthetic traditional color brush. I'm also going to use a little rubber spatula. You can honestly just use like a kitchen one. Then you're going to need some kind of comb. We're going to be doing a little bit of teasing and back combing. So make sure that it's one that has like pretty tight bristles so that you can get a good grip on the hair and get a good tease. And then for our lightener, I'm going to be using Paul Mitchell Skylight. This is a clay lightener. You can use regular lightening powder as well. Um, it's just for this particular application and technique, I like the clay. And as we're going along, I'll, you'll see why and I'll explain a little bit more. And then I'm going to be using 20 volume developer and then balayage film, which you can literally just use clear wrap, saran wrap, you know, from your kitchen. It's literally all the same thing and then you're going to need a demi permanent color for toning at the end which i'll explain what i have here when we get to that point you're going to need developer for your toner and then i'm going to use a bottle to apply my toner but you can just use the color bowl for that too and you're also going to need some gloves so i think that's everything i will have all of these things linked in the description i'll have the exact version of what i'm using and then i will also have um, Sally's versions as well. So like I said, we are working with a middle part. That's where I normally part my hair. From here, I'm going to go from my part down behind my ear. And this doesn't have to be perfect because, I mean, I really am looking for like just natural looking color. 
so your lines don't have to be like perfectly straight clip it out of the way whenever I'm doing my own hair I like to start from the back and then work my way to the front because if I do the front pieces first it's gonna be falling in my face and it's gonna make it harder to see the back come across on the other side do the same exact thing go down behind the ear again clip this out of the way so we have the front section off from the back in the back I'm gonna come down the middle again doesn't have to be perfectly straight and I'm just gonna split that in half and pull all of my hair forward this is gonna be a little bit trickier to do if your hair is on the shorter side in that case I would suggest having a mirror in front of you and then also setting up one behind you so that you can kind of like see the reflection and see the back of your head or just ask somebody to help you so I'm gonna start with a scoop of the clay lightning powder as far as how much you need to mix up it's obviously going to vary depending on how thick and long your hair is I prefer mixing a smaller amount in the beginning and then just remixing as I go so that way the product isn't like just sitting out and drying up and then we're gonna take our 20 volume developer however much powder you're using you want to do the same amount of developer so we're gonna add that in and then I'm gonna take my spatula you want to be careful this can get kind of messy I'm actually gonna add more powder to this because this is a little bit more liquidy than I want the consistency that we're looking for is kind of like whipped cream cheese so you want it to be quite thick so the whole idea with clay lightener is that it's really thick so you're able to just like paint the surface of your section rather than the product like fully saturating and sinking through your section of hair it's just gonna sit on top I'll explain a little bit more you'll see what I mean and then it forms a hard outer shell which keeps the product inside moist so that it can continue working whenever lightener starts to dry out that's when it stops working so clay lightener is ideal when you're just going to be like processing in open air and not using foils because it doesn't dry out as quickly as regular lightener would so that's what the difference is and that's why we're using this and you definitely need gloves for this because you're going to be using your hands a lot feel free to completely customize this to however you want for me I want most of the color to be towards the ends of my hair I want it to be very very blended so that it will be as low maintenance as possible I don't want to bring the color up too high to my roots and I think I want like a 50 50 ratio of my natural color to the light pieces so just keep that in mind think to yourself okay how much of these highlights do I want to see do I want my hair to be majority my natural color and just have a few pops of brightness throughout in that case don't overdo it and add too much and just determine where do you want to see the lightness so I know that when I pull my hair forward when I'm wearing it down I don't want all of this in here to be super dark so I want to make sure I'm adding the highlights on top here to this layer so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just section this off a little bit and I'm gonna take like a medium thickness piece I would say so that's the thing with this technique like I said we're surface painting so when I apply this product it's only sitting on the top layer of where I'm applying it. it's not gonna sink all the way through so the thicker the sections you take the more of a built-in low light you're gonna get and the more of your natural color you're gonna be leaving out so if you want to see more brightness and less of your natural color then you want to take thinner pieces I think I'm gonna apply the highlights like up on the side here and then down underneath so that way again when I pull it forward you will see the brightness and then also think about when you pull your hair up in a ponytail if I pull it up like this I want to make sure that I'm seeing a little bit of that brightness underneath there too first what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tease this piece of hair so I'm taking my comb holding this piece pretty taut at the ends and I'm just going to gently start from the bottom and just comb up to create a tease and this is just going to help us blend a little bit more it's just like diffusing that hair so it'll just make it so much easier to blend and you don't have to worry about having like any harsh lines anywhere so I'm applying the product with my spatula onto the back of my hand and then I'm going to take my brush 
and I'm using the side of the brush. I'm not dipping into the product like this. I'm keeping it horizontal and I'm just getting the one side of the brush coated, making sure it's not too gloppy on there. I want the product to be pretty smooth on the brush. And I'm gonna start painting. I suggest wherever you want your highlights to start towards the top, apply it a couple inches below that point so that way you can blend up. So I'm applying, holding this nice and tight so that the hair isn't like going all over the place. I want to keep good tension so that I have a nice smooth surface to paint on. And then from here up top, I'm going to just like brush upward. And that's what's going to give me that nice blend and diffusion between doing this and the back combing. It's like foolproof blending. So I'm going to bring this all the way to the end. And you want to make sure that you have full saturation. This needs to look completely solid, opaque white. If you can see your hair coming through the product at all, then you don't have enough product on it and you're not going to get bright enough results. So then on the ends here, I'm just going to place the hair over the back of my fingertips and I'm just going to paint the product down to the end of that piece, just like that, and then just lay it flat. So underneath here, hopefully you can see that, there's no product on the other side. It's literally just all on top there. I do suggest, by the way, keeping a towel nearby so that you can kind of wipe your hands as you're going because this, like I said, it can get a little messy. So after we've applied the product to that first piece, I'm going to take some of my balayage film or saran wrap, you know, whatever you have, and I'm going to wrap this piece of hair very gently in the saran wrap. You want to try to not push the product down or touch it or move it too much. You want to just gently place that plastic on top. This is going to help keep separation so that I'm not getting product on pieces that I don't want lightened. So now that I did that first piece, I'm going to mimic the exact same thing on the other side. So that way I'm making sure that everything is even. So same thing, we're going to pull this piece of hair down and then we are going to back comb this. Pull this nice and tight, keep good tension so I have a nice smooth surface, and just start painting. You want to keep the brush horizontal. You don't want to point the bristles into the hair because then it's going to push it down and you might get some splotchiness. You want to keep everything nice and smooth and just flat on the surface. So I brushed upward a little bit. Now I'm gonna bring this down. And then we're just gonna move along and keep doing the same thing basically. This piece, I think I'm going to paint, like if it's just falling naturally, I wanna see some highlights here, but I also want it to be on this side too. So I'm gonna just paint like the side here and then the top over here. And again, don't get like too focused on where I'm placing things and how I'm doing it. Just do it where you want to see the brightness. And if you have a piece that's like really wide, feel free to just split it in half to make it a little
if I pull my hair forward, what do I want to see? I just have this little thin piece in the front because I have a lot of layers in my hair right now. So this piece I think I'm just going to leave as a low light because I don't want it to be too bright on the ends. I don't want it to look like an ombre. So I think I'm just going to leave that. I'll push that back and then I'm just going to come up at an angle and kind of make like a triangle in the front here. Clip that out of the way so you can see it's just following the natural head shape. I kind of created a triangle with this top section. This piece here I don't think I'm actually going to back comb because I want to bring it up a little bit higher. But I'm going to make sure that I'm really holding it nice and tight so I have as much control as possible. And I'm going to start in the front here. And I'm going to just like paint on a little bit of a money piece and I'm just going to lightly feather that up a little bit. I don't want it to go all the way to the top, but a little bit there. And then again, I know I've said this a million times already, but it's just wherever you want to see the brightness. That's what's great about this is literally just going where you place it and it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it I find this so much easier than foils especially when you're doing it on your Towel dry your hair a little bit so you can see the color and kind of see where it's at and what it lifted to. If you like the way that the color looks on its own, feel free to just leave it be. You don't necessarily have to tone it. I'm going to just to make sure that everything is nice and even. So I'm just going to do a 7N from Redken Shades EQ. This is a demi permanent color. So whenever you are doing your toner, you just wanna make sure that it's a demi permanent. I have a whole video all about toning, which I will link in the description in case this is confusing and you want to know a little bit more detail. So I'm going to add about one and a half ounces. And then I'm going to do equal parts of the Redken Shades EQ processing solution. Give it a good shake. And then I'm just gonna go section by section applying this to my hair. You just wanna get the color on there and make sure that you're fully saturating your hair. And this isn't going to do anything to the dark parts of my hair because this is a deposit only color and it's not dark enough or pigmented enough for the dark parts of my hair. I don't have to worry about it. So I'm just trying to get it all over, but you know, focusing it just on the ends, I'm not bothering with my roots where I don't Demi permanent color. I'm gonna let this process for 20 minutes. 
Then I'm gonna hop back in the shower, do just like a little gentle shampoo, condition it, blow dry it style, and then I will show you the final result. So yeah, obviously you already saw my final hair at the beginning of this video, but here's just a little bit of a close up. So you can see the lighter pieces that I have throughout here. And I just love the blend of it so much. There's no harsh lines anywhere. You really can't tell, like it's so gradual how it goes from the dark to the lighter pieces. So that's it for this video. Like I said, don't forget to check the description for links to everything. If you liked this video, I would really appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Also feel free to go follow me over on Instagram for some more hair advice and inspo. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.